So, let us start our discussion on the same topic that is epitaxial growth, growth of epitaxial film. In the last class, I have discussed what is epitaxial deposition and different epitaxial techniques, their classification and I also discussed on different reactor configurations, their advantages and disadvantages and most widely used reactor configuration is the barrel reactor I mentioned and there the reactant gas flow is, is horizontal and the wafers are kept vertical so that you can accommodate large number of wafers in one run. Today, I will discuss how the reaction between the epitaxial precursor gases takes place and how the growth proceeds. That means the growth kinetics of epitaxial growth. So, I will discuss on on the uh, assuming certain uh, nomenclature and one of these obviously the laminar gas flow, gas flow is horizontal to the film and there the reactant molecules that means if we use silicon tetrachloride or dichlorosilane SiH2Cl2. So, those reactant gas, ga gas that means that is source gas along with the dopant gas and the carrier gas, carrier gas here is hydrogen. So, those gases, gas flows are controlled by mass flow controller and with a certain ratio, certain partial pressure, we flow the gas into the reaction chamber. And what happens after entering the gas into the reaction chamber? How the uh, silicon is decomposed from SiCl4? and how the silicon molecule one by one it is deposited on the surface of the epitaxial film that I, I have shown in a diagram in my last class. Just one arrange in a regular order just like a uh, brick placed in a regular order to build a house in a similar fashion. So now the reactant gases is delivered to the substrate by transport in the gas stream with a finite velocity. That means this velocity depends on how you are maintaining the flow and that is controlled by mass flow controller. Near the substrate surface, this velocity is almost zero because of friction. Because just at the surface, there is a friction among the gas molecules and the substrate surface and the velocity will be zero. A stagnant and boundary layer will be formed near the substrate surface through which the reactant species diffuse to reach the surface and the reaction proceeds. That is the total phenomena what is happening inside the reactor. Now, uh, how this boundary layer is formed that I shown in uh, last class in a diagram and here in the reactor uh, configuration the problem of the boundary layer and stagnant layer can be minimized by placing the susceptor at a certain angle and that already uh, I have discussed in last class how to remove the stagnant layer and this portion is a stagnant layer and this is the gas flow is almost horizontal in nature and near the substrate surface here and he here the velocity is zero and the reactant species that means SiCl4 and hydrogen they will decompose and those species will come. Uh, on the surface through diffusion in the gas flow in the in the in the layer stagnant layer. So, this is the stagnant layer or boundary layer. So, all the uh, species will diffuse through the stagnant layer and they will reach at the surface and then the reaction takes place. Now, the gas particle the, the, the reactant molecules will just after arriving on the surface there is a reaction which depends on the surface rate constant. So, this K s surface reaction rate constant 
and also some kind of diffusion is also involved which we have discussed in your oxidation class. There also similar thing happens. The uh, growth of silicon dioxide in, uh, in a furnace, kinetics of oxide growth. So similarly here also the flux will be there. Some flux means crossing this uh, gas number of uh, reactant species crossing per unit area per unit time is the flux and which are arriving on the substrate surface. So that is another flux. So that those uh, in, under the steady state condition, those two fluxes will be equal. So similar to the growth kinetics of oxidation. So here there are certain assumptions and those assumptions also uh, will help us for uh, developing the uh, growth kinetics of epitaxial film under ideal condition. And from there our ultimate goal is to find the growth rate of the film, growth rate of epitaxial film. So now uh, uh, this uh, uh, next slide, the assumptions are shown, what are the assumptions based on which this growth kinetics developed or this model is epitaxial growth model is developed. The first assumption is the system is linear. The whole epitaxial reactor system is linear. That is flux is linear related to the driving forces. Flux is linearly related to the driving forces. That is the first condition. And the second assumption is a reduction of SiCl4 is explained by single reaction. Although the reaction are taking the SiCl4 decomposes in, in three steps, SiCl4 to SiCl2 and SiCl2 then comes Si. But in this model, we will assume that reaction is a single step reaction and not by multiple steps. Intermediate formation of silicon SiCl2 we will not assume in this model. Okay? And the third uh, uh, assumption is flux of HCl reaction product is neglected because reaction byproduct here is HCl that you have seen and this HCl will also have certain flux and those flux will, will not consider in, in our model. So that means flux of HCl reaction product is neglected. So now based on these three assumptions, we will develop this epitaxial growth model and there are certain uh, nomenclatures are there. So the mathematical symbols which we use for developing this epitaxial growth model are as follows. Small hg is the gas phase mass transfer coefficient is shown here, small hg, capital G suffix, gas phase mass transfer coefficient. Ks is surface reaction rate constant which is equal to K0 exponential minus Ea by Kt where Ea is the activation energy and that activation energy in case of silicon tetrachloride SiCl4 it is 44 kilocalorie per mole which is equivalent to 1.9 electron volt per atom. And in this expression of case, the small k is Boltzmann constant and T is temperature in absolute scale. Okay. So Ks equal to K0 exponential minus Ea by Kt. This K0 is a constant and in this particular case, the constant is 1 into 10 to the power 7 centimeter per second. That is for silicon growth in SiCl4 system. That value is 1.1 into 10 to the power 7 centimeter per second. And the K, which is Boltzmann constant, that value is 8.62 into 10 to the power minus 5 electron volt per, per degree Kelvin. Okay? So these are the values of the constants. And now we will define Ng is equal to concentration of the particle at the gas stream. Concentration means number of particles per unit volume. That is the concentration of the particles at the gas stream is Ng. And similarly another term is N0 is also defined that N0 is the concentration of the particles at the substrate surface. N0 is the concentration of the particles at the substrate surface. Now, N 
is the number of silicon atoms per unit volume after AP growth, that is N. Number of silicon atoms per unit volume after AP growth. That means silicon epitaxial film has already grown. Inside the film, epitaxial film, N is the concentration of silicon atom. So, there are three N, one is NG, one is N0 and one is N. NG is the gas phase concentration, N0 is the surface and N is after epitaxial film is formed, then number of particles, silicon particles per unit volume that is N. Now, we will define two flux density that is one is J0, J1 and another is J2. J1 is the flux particles that means number of particles crossing per unit area per unit time that is the flux that is the flux of particles from the bulk of the gas stream towards the substrate surface. So, that is a J1. Flux of particle from bulk of the gas stream towards the substrate surface. That means all the particles has to come from the gas phase towards the surface. Then J2 is defined as the flux of the reactant particles consumed by the reaction. One is J1 from the gas phase onto the surface, how much it is coming and then is a J2. J2 is the flux which is consumed, number of the reactant particles which is consumed to grow the silicon film. These are the two J1 and J2. Now, using all these definitions or notations, we will develop now the model. The growth kinetics of vapor phase epitaxy we will develop now. So, in the epitaxial growth process at low temperature, the growth is limited by the surface reaction rate constant is which is Ks and at high temperature it is limited by the gas phase mass transfer coefficient Hg, Hg. That means in the low temperature the growth that means growth will initiate at low temperature by the surface reaction rate constant and at high temperature it is limited by the gas phase mass transfer coefficient Hg. So, now the flux J1 which must be proportional to difference of Ng minus N0, Ng is the concentration in gas phase and N0 is the concentration at the surface. So, the difference of this concentration in Ng minus N0 and this J1 is proportional to Ng minus N0 and which is equal to J1 equal to Hg, Hg is the mass phase, gas phase mass transfer coefficient Hg, so that is Hg into Ng minus N0. So, once the particles arrive on the surface, then the J2, you can define J2, the either flux of reaction, the number of uh, uh, particles which are taking part in the reaction, that is J2 that is equal to K s into N0, K s is the surface reaction rate constant and N0 is the number of particles available on the substrate surface. Okay. So, that means J2 is equal to K s into N0. Now, in this steady state, in this steady state, this J1 and J2 are equal and say J1 equal to J2 equal to J. So, now if I equate J1 equal to J2, then Hg into Ng minus N0 is equal to Ks N0. Okay? So, now from this equation easily you can get the value of N0 and that N0 is equal to Hg Ng divided by Hg plus Ks that we can get from this equation. Okay? Now, J equal to under the steady state J equal to J2 and that is equal to K s into N0. Now, we put the value of N0 in this equation, put the value of N0 in this equation, then we get J that is steady state flux is equal to this N0 comes here, this N0 value you put it here, then K s Hg, then it comes K s Hg divided by Hg plus K s into Ng. Okay? So, that is the value of J under steady state condition. 
So now equation 2 relates the flux to the reactant concentration in the gas stream and system parameter. So flux to the reaction reactant constant in the gas stream that is the the that is uh, decided by the uh, the that is the flux and uh, what are the uh, system parameters? System parameters is a case and in a g these are the system parameters under certain gas flow. So now uh, in the next is the, the growth rate of the silicon is given by if we say it is Vy, growth rate of the silicon is given by Vy which is dy dt, dy dt, y if you say in the vertical direction is a y, so that is given by j by n, j by n, n is what? Number of concentration of the particles in the film, epitaxial film, film after growth, that is n. And j is the, j is the under steady state condition, number of uh, uh, reactant particles consumed basically, that is the j. So that j by n is given, will be, uh, will be uh, equal to the, the growth rate and dimensionally also it is correct. J is number of atoms per unit area, per unit time, okay, and the N is equal to per unit volume, number of particles per unit volume. You just dimensionalize, you check, and it will come the the length and uh, time inverse. Length means time inverse means that is micron per minute or the uh, you can say uh, micron per hour, something like that. Dimensionally also it is coming dy dt, that means length t minus 1. So now uh, the if you uh, divide j by n, then you will get hg ks divided by hg plus ks into ng by n. So that is the growth rate. So now very simple relation with, with lot of assumptions, we can get this simplified relation of growth rate of epitaxial film. And for SiCl4 system, silicon tetrachloride system, the value of Hg is equal to 5 centimeter per second, Ng is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 19 atom per cc. One example is shown here. Ks is equal to 5.1836 at 1250 degree centigrade. Ks is surface reaction rate constant. That is a function of temperature because k is equal to k naught into e to the power, uh, k naught into e to the power minus e a by k t. So now that k is value is 5.1836 at 1250 degree centigrade. N value is a silicon atomic density that is 5 into 10 to the power 2 atom per city, cc. Atomic density of silicon in single crystal silicon is 5 into 10 to the power 22 atom per cc. And if you put all these values into this equation, we will find Vy equal to 0 0.916 micron per minute. Okay. So this is the growth rate assuming these values. Now from equation 3, you can, you can get dVy dKs. So if you derive this equation with respect to Ks, then you are getting this Vy Hg divided by Hg plus Ks dot 1 by Ks. Now, d v y by v y is equal to from this equation a g divided by a g plus k s d k s by k s. Now, this particular equation has has been derived for a particular objective. What is that? You see here the d y the del v y v y that is the the variation of the growth rate. Isn't it? Delta Vy, Vy, growth rate variation, and in this case, you can find d k s by k s. But in k s relation, the, you see the k naught is constant, a is constant, and k s Boltzmann constant, which is also parameter constant, the variation is temperature. That means d k s means here is a temperature variation, slight temperature variation. How the growth rate changes with temperature variation, how sensitive 
is the epitaxial growth process with temperature variation that is known from this equation that you can calculate and that is a very important parameter and you will find that even the 1 degree or 2 degree temperature variation over the substrate surface will lead to non-uniform growth, growth rate will change. If the growth rate varies, obviously the thickness of the epitaxial film over the entire surface will not be uniform, it will change from one region to other region. That is why the constant temperature over uniform temperature over the entire surface or over the entire susceptor is very, very important consideration in epitaxial growth process. And uh, later on I will give you some of the problems in tutorial class from where you will calculate the with even with fluctuation of 1 degree temperature how much is the growth rate variation. You will see uh, numerical problems you will solve and you will understand you will have a feeling how it is why it is so much sensitive in the growth process. Okay? Now using equation 4 and equation 5 you can see here the dVy dy that is given by the Hg by Hg plus Ks into Ea by Kt into Dt by T. Here directly in temperature variation because this, this you case, Dks by Ks you can calculate from this equation and if you put it, so this equation directly give you the temperature variation, the thickness variation with the change in temperature. Okay? So now, uh, this is the growth kinetics very small and uh, the liquid phase epitaxy uh, uh, was uh, already covered in, in the last class as I remember. Now we will we'll, we'll, we'll switch over those topics. Now we will start another epitaxial system that is molecular beam epitaxy, MBE, molecular beam epitaxy. So far we have discussed this vapor phase epitaxy, then we discussed the liquid phase epitaxy also. And how the growth takes place in case of liquid phase epitaxy that is particularly meant for 3-5 semiconductor film growth and very method is very simple compared to the uh, VP process but uh, the quality of the film, epitaxial film is not that much good because it is a manual surface roughness, surface finish is not up to the quality of the VLSI process. Okay? Uh, but Another process which is MBE molecular beam epitaxy that is a, a very good process by which you can get you can get ultra thin epitaxial film with extremely good quality and what are the features of molecular beam epitaxy is shown here. This MBE molecular beam epitaxy is a non CVD vapor phase epitaxy is a non CVD process no chemical vapor deposition, no chemical reaction takes place. This is completely different from this VP reaction and VP process. And here in MBE, we can grow the film by evaporation of materials in ultra high vacuum environment. And that vacuum is of the order of 10 to the power minus 10 millimeter of mercury. Very high vacuum we deposit the materials atom by atom, molecular or atomic deposition. So that is the main feature of MBE. By utilizing very low growth rate and that growth rate is in one hour, you can have one micron or less, can tailor doping profiles and composition on a monolayer scale. You can have the growth is monolayer growth you can achieve in MBE and doping profiles also you can tailor because the growth process is very, very slow, extremely slow and growth temperature in MBE is in the range of 400 to 800 degree centigrade. So that is the substrate temperature on which film is grown that is very low compared to vapor phase epitaxial systems. So that is one advantage in VLSI process because low temperature, low DT process is good because distribution of the uh, redistribution of the carriers will not take place. So doping profile will not widen 
say it will be intact. So that is one of the advantage of low process in VLSI, low temperature process, low DT process in VLSI. Now growth temperature is in the range of 400 to 800 degree centigrade and the pressure is also in the range of 10 to the power minus 10 to 10 to the power minus 11 millimeter of mercury that is extremely low pressure and here is the pro, uh, cost coming because you have to achieve this much pressure which is of the order of 10 to the power minus, eight, minus 11 millimeter of mercury is not very simple. You have to have a, a stringent condition of the chamber, you have to have different pumps, advanced pumps you have to use. This kind of vacuum you can create by using the uh, titanium sublimation pump, molecular iron pump and the cryosorption pump. So, at the same time to create this vacuum which is of the order of 10 to the power minus 11 millimeter of mercury, you cannot use any pump which use some hydrocarbon oil. So then the oil vapor, traces of oil vapor may come into the vacuum chamber and that will contaminate the film which is not at all desired. So the vacuum pumps used in MB system are all oil free and those oil free pumps which can achieve that level of vacuum is titanium sublimation pump, molecular resorption pump or cryosorption pump, molecular ion pump. So these are the pumps which are used normally in MB system. Okay? And this MB system is very good for 3-5 semiconductor materials because there we want film of the order of 50 angstrom to 100 angstrom different layers gallium arsenide, aluminum gallium arsenide and then again gallium arsenide then so indium arsenide like that different composition of 3,5 or 2,6 uh, compounds that means in the compound semiconductor growth which may be the two uh, which may also be binary or ternary compounds so gallium, aluminum arsenide etc. So in those cases it is highly suitable. But even nowadays people are trying to use in uh, silicon technology also particularly in heterojunction devices which is silicon germanium film and I will discuss how the heterostructure films are grown, heterostructure APT axial film is a different kind of uh, environment required, different considerations you need, so it is highly suitable. For VLSI, silicon VLSI particularly, the film thickness is of the order of nearly micron or maybe little bit less than micron and that much amount of uh, thickness takes a longer time in MB system. That is why the commercial process or industrial process of epitaxy does not include their MB. MB is basically research equipment and where you can grow very, very high quality of epitaxial film for ultra thin devices, ultra thin films that is the main purpose and objective of MBE. Uh, next uh, we will see the machine design because here the machine de design will be totally different from vapor phase epitaxy because here the main technique is evaporation and source materials are evaporated from effusion cells. Effusion cells are also known as Kunsen cell, a, a, a specific chamber where the solid material is evaporated at very high temperature. That is the known, that is known as effusion cell. There a heater will be there, solid for example you want to evaporate the silicon or gallium arsenide. So gallium or silicon material will be inside the effusion cell. So there you have to heat it and the vapor will be created and this effusion cell will have a small orifice, small point hole and through that hole the, the vapor of that particular material will come out. I will show the effusion cell structure in a next diagram of MB schematic. Now the temperature control is very critical and is up to 1600 degree centigrade and this temperature is not the substrate temperature as I mentioned the MB requires the temperature of 400 to 
800 degrees centigrade, that is the subset temperature where the film is grown. But where the 1600 is required, that is for evaporation in a Kunsen cell, because there you have to evaporate the solid material, and that solid material is silicon or germanium or gallium or the, uh, the, uh, the uh, say P2O5 phosphorus pentoxide or arsenic oxide, something like that. So, those materials have to be evaporated, and for that you need very high temperature because melting points of those materials are not very low. So, that temperature means the 1500, 1600 degree centigrade temperature with a very good control, critical control is required because this temperature, depending on the temperature, the partial pressure of the pressure will also vary. If the temperature changes, so obviously partial pressure of the, the, uh, the vapor of the molecule will change and automatically the, the pressure uh, ejected, the molecules ejected from the effusion cell, those pressure will vary and growth rate also will vary because temperature control is one of the critical parameter in all epitaxial process. Similarly, in MBE also. The next point is beams interrupted with mechanical shutters to control composition and doping. All these effusion cells in front of that I told in effusion cell is having a small orifice through that the vapor is coming. So, there are some mechanical shutters are there and if you open the shutter, then only that vapor will reach the substrate surface, otherwise not. So, that is that means uh, the, uh, the molecular vapor must be interrupted with mechanical shutters to control composition and doping level. So, for example, once you know once a P type layer, you open the shutter of the, uh, the phosphorus source. Then after that you want N type layer, you close the shutter of the phosphorus Kunsen cell, then open the shutter of the boron effusion cell. So, then after N type, then you can grow the P type. That means here you may not have uh, uh, implantation, you may not have this diffusion process to grow a junction, just layer by layer, P type layer, then N type layer, then again P type layer. So, you can form. So, in this way, just by single epitaxial reactor can give you a NPN structure or PNP structure. Transistor can be grown just by depositing the film one on other. So, without taking the substrate outside the chamber, that is one of the advantage in MBE system. So, next is all growth chambers surfaces cooled to liquid nitrogen temperature to prevent impurity incorporation in the film. The high temperature is the Kunshan cell and the substrate are kept at a certain distance from the Kunshan cell and the whole chamber which is evacuated in the order of 10 to the minus 10 or 10 to the minus 11 centimeter of uh, millimeter of mercury. So, that chamber is cooled using cold water circulation, chilled water circulation at the surface of the chamber. So, that means the reactor is cooled and inside only the Kunshan cell will be heated, that it will be heated uh, or effusion cell will be heated at very high temperature or the substrate holder where the substrates are kept that may be heated at a high temperature, but the whole reactor should be at very low temperature that will help to prevent impurity incorporation in the film. Those are the conditions to get very high quality, very good quality pure film uh, without any stress of impurity. Now, the MB reactor configuration that will help you to understand how the MB is grown. So, this is the schematic of the MB reactor configuration. What I was discussing regarding the effusion cell, these are the effusion cell, this one, this, this, this and this. So, you see you can arrange a number of effusion cell in a, uh, in a, in a particular fashion, so that they are all aimed to deposit on the substrate and this substrate is kept at a distance from the effusion cell. And this is the heater arrangement where the substrate holders are heated, that temperature is 400 to 800 degree centigrade and this is the substrate, for example, here gallium arsenide wafer wafer is kept here on which you are going, you are um, 
you are aim you are going to deposit uh, the epitaxial film and these are the mechanical shutters which i discussed in the reactor configuration so these are the uh, mechanical shutters this one this one here is one and here and here this mechanical shutter can rotate rotate to open and close the chamber for example here the shutter is closed the orifice which is very point hole on the fusion cell just at the middle here is the orifice as i was mentioning through the small orifice the vapor is coming and here shutter is open so you see the aluminum vapor is coming here the shutter is open this is arsenic fusion cell this is a gallium fusion cell so that means all gallium arsenic and aluminum the three fusion cells are are uh, open that means shutter is open so the vapor will mix here aluminum arsenic and gallium vapor with a certain, certain stoichiometric ratio and how much ratio it will it will be deposited here that depends on the partial pressure of the fusion partial pressure of the vapor inside the fusion cell and that partial pressure is a function of temperature okay so that can be adjusted in the fusion cell with um, externally with certain changing certain parameters so now this uh, that means the mechanical shutters will have an arrangement for rotation to open and close the the holes here and uh, the substrate uh, heater should be there and these are the liquid nitrogen cooled sealed and this is one sealing which this particular zone of the furnace that means here is a uh, heated wafer holder so that means temperature is high here maybe up to 600 800 degree or maybe 400 degree centigrade this side temperature is also very high effusion cell temperature inside is about 14 1500 degree centigrade and this is the liquid nitrogen cooled seal sealing so that this side will be cooled and the, this is the vacuum chamber the whole vacuum chamber is evacuated at a vacuum of 10 to the minus 10 to 10 to the minus 11 millimeter of mercury so one thing if the vacuum is extremely good that means high vacuum of the order of that level so obviously the vapor particles will follow here in straight line there should not be any collision in between the molecule because here mean free path will be very large mean free path of the, the molecules which are coming from the fusion cell will be very large which which prevents the chances of the collision and if it prevents the chances of collision so that uh, the uh, there is there is a less chance of turbulence there so all the 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 in a straight line in a in a regular fashion this is coming here and deposition will be uniform if the movement is turbulent the molecules they they experience lot of collision before reaching the substrate surface then you cannot expect uniform growth rate of the film on the substrate surface so this is a favorable condition to have uniform growth rate because here the growth rate is very slow and at, as i mentioned in the atomic level even you can expect of the order of 10 to 20 angstrom or 50 angstrom layer so they are extremely important is growth rate uniformity even 50 angstrom growth rate is non uniform so device behavior will not be good at all okay so that can be achieved by using extremely high vacuum inside the chamber okay so this is the the schematic drawing actual drawing of the mb system is not so simple because you you can imagine so you have to create vacuum 10 to the minus 10 so there the pumping arrangement will not be so easy lot of pumps will be there connected and the uh, the effusion cell temperature is extremely high that heating arrangement of the effusion cell will also not very easy and complicated structure is a complicated heating elements heating arrangement is used so that will show you another uh, diagram which is shown here is the total mb system other other one is schematic that is also schematic not the actual so actual mb system if you see so that is not very simplified machine like oxidation and diffusion furnace etc so here uh, different stages are there 
and those stages are uh, shown here. This is the deposition chamber and this part is the preparation chamber. And the wafers one by one it, it, it will enter into this is a cassette arrangement. So loading arrangement is there. So the cassette entry here the wafers are stacked one by one wafer will go. So deposition will take place and after that it is taken out so another wafer you can send it. And here is a sputter clean stage. So that means the wafers from the stack is brought back with the roller. This is the roller arrangement here and in, inside this you can have a sputtering arrangement so that you can clean the substrates at this particular stage and after cleaning the, the OFR is moving here and then it is fixed on the substrate holder and this is the cryo panel which I shown in earlier the seal, the liquid nitrogen seal which will uh, bring down the temperature of the chamber. And these are the Kunsen cells along with the starters and here is the deposition process and at the same time you see the inside the chamber there should be some in situ diagnostic tools that is how the growth is growth proceeds. So there some diagnostic tools when growth rate you have to you have, you have to know at the same time whether it is a regular crystallographic growth or some other growth pattern is obtained that you have to ensure. So for that some analysis is there and this is and the composition analysis. That means in earlier diagram I have shown aluminum, gallium, arsenic deposition, algas. So whether the composition of the algas is in order which we want or it is not in order then we have to change the partial pressure or the, uh, the, uh, the diameter of the orifice of the fusion cell. So that has to be decided during the process. After completion of the process, if I find it is not up to the mark or are, are not as per our requirement, then the whole process is gone, isn't it? So that is why in all MB process maintain some of the in situ diagnostic tool and one of is a read analysis and sometime OJ or analysis is being done where you can analyze the film. So whether the it is single crystal layer, whether there is defects, more defect, whether growth rate is uniformity and the composition analysis of the film that is being done in inside the chamber some diagnostic tool. That is why the whole system is highly expensive. All individual diagnostic tool is not cheap one. So everything is, is expensive and complicated process. So all things are mounted inside the chamber. So the, here is the analytical process stage. You see analytical diagnostic tools are connected here and through which you can measure the quality, you can estimate the quality of the film. So now, now we will uh, next, uh, uh, what are the characteristics of the MB growth? So let us discuss those points. So here the very low growth pressure, minimum 10 to the power minus 9 tot, vacuum you may create up to 10 to the power minus 11, but minimum pressure you have to maintain 10 to the power minus tot that allows the formation of layer by layer growth on an atomically clean surface. Atomic, atomically clean surface that means in situ cleaning has to be done. That is why one arrangement is shown in earlier uh, schematic diagram that is sputter cleaning. Okay? So the however whatever you clean outside the chamber again the whole wafer is to be clean inside the vacuum chamber in MB system. So that is you need atomically clean surface to grow atomic layer level of the MB film. So low growth temperature 350 to 600 degree centigrade minimizes the solid state diffusion and auto doping. This is another MB good feature. Slow growth rate 0.1 to 5 angstrom per second. This is the growth rate you can say per second. 0.1 to 5 angstrom per second permits atomically thin layer growth and better uniformity. Growth rate and the composition are determined only by the impinging species and are independent of the substrate orientation and temperature. Very, very important. Here the growth rate does not depend 
on the substrate orientation. In other case, it depends. Other case means VP system. It depends. So here it is independent of the substrate orientation and substrate temperature. Abrupt compositional transition can also be obtained by rapidly opening and closing mechanical shutter. So that is that feature is never achieved in any other reactors in VP, VP technique or LP technique. Abrupt compositional and a transition. That means once you get gallium arsenide, then you can get gallium aluminium arsenide, then again you can get gallium arsenide like that. And doping level also from P type to N type, N type to P type, abruptly you can change just by closing and opening the shutter, mechanical shutter. And that arrangement ensures you the different compositional layers of the epidactyl film and with the abrupt change. Okay? And others are capable of in situ characterization of the sample in the UHV environment. And that I just I mentioned the read. This is the read. Reflection high energy electron diffraction. The read. Another diagnostic tool is QMS, quadruple mass spectrometer. OJ, electron spectroscopy, which is AES. X ray photoelectron spectroscopy, XPS. So these are all diagnostic tools. So you can, these are all in situ characterization. You can include inside the chamber the read analysis equipment, QMS analysis equipment, AES analysis equipment, XPS analysis equipment. And all this equipment will give you the com correct compositional analysis and correct crystallographic structure of the film you are going inside in MB system. Okay? So this is one extra and good feature of MB compared to the VP and LP. Another one, doping is carried out by the by the co-incorporation of dopant species during epitaxy. Also the dopant sticking coefficient is changed by changing the substrate temperature while the variation of dopant flux is obtained by changing the Kunshan cell temperature. The, do, the dopant flux is obtained by changing the Kunshan cell temperature. How you are changing Kunshan cell temperature change means the partial vapor pressure of that those molecules is changing inside the Kunshan cell and that will change uh, the dopant flux and you can change the growth rate. And sticking coefficient also can be changed by changing the substrate temperature. Sticking coefficient means this will ensure how the molecules, individual molecules are sticking on the substrate surface. Okay. And Next is the P type dopant is easily easy to achieve by boron. P type dopant is easily is easy to achieve by boron, which has short residence time and almost unity sticking coefficient, while N type doping by antimony is difficult due to low sticking coefficient. P time is very simple because short residence time and almost unity sticking coefficient, but N type little bit problematic because sticking coefficient is low in case of antimony and it is difficult because of low sticking coefficient. Okay? So these are the uh, different characteristics features of MB. The last one is capable of multilayer growth that is quantum oils and superlative structure. Quantum oil and superlative structure is possible with the help of this uh, MB system. Very thin layer of film is is obtained in MB which are required for quantum oil devices and also superlative structures. Good quality thin crystal layer is one of the requirement for quantum oil devices and superlative structures. Okay? So with this let me stop today. Next class I would like to discuss on epitaxial defects and other advancements in epitaxial process. Okay? Thank you.